Okay, so welcome back to the first, actually, welcome to the very first, uh, what's it called, very first podcast for the NASCAR Dutch Bros Cup Series, or um, just anything for na- related to NASCAR. Uh, this is just going to be the first one to see if we really want to do this for the next, like, few weeks or next two weeks. So, yeah, I'm here with uh, Mike or Mike Phoben. Uh, Mike, wait, what is... Sorry about that. Mike Fob Fan 101. Mike Fob Fan 101 on Instagram. Make sure to follow him. Um, so we're just, I'm just going to ask. We're just going to talk about some uh, silly season stuff. Uh, so I can't get in, Andy. Uh, so first, uh, first thing is talking about uh, Eric Jones going to the 43 for uh, Richard Childress. Ra- no, R- Richard Petty Racing. RPM, that's what I meant. And yeah, so what what are your thoughts on on him? Going? Well, well, it's to be expected because I feel like either that or the thirty seven was the best that he could have gotten. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Hendrick wasn't really looking at him. We didn't know. We knew that. Yeah. I honestly thought he was going to go to Gaunt Bros, but I'm glad that he did get to the forty three because that's way better. Yeah, uh, the 43 is the best car for him at the moment if he was still a free agent till now. And also with uh, Bubba Wallace going into 23-11 racing, um, a lot of people hate him, a lot of people like him. I'm, like, neutral towards him. I don't know. Uh, with everybody, I have, like, everybody in the comments and Instagram and stuff. And, Yeah. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of him for my own reasons. It has nothing at all to do with his beliefs, but I'm just not a huge fan of him. Yeah, and a bunch of silly season news. Uh, Clint Boyer retiring, uh, going into the booth. What do you think he could do with in the booth? He's going to make Fox great again, man. Yeah. Um, you already got Jeff. He's got good insight. Mike Joy is a good commentator, but Clint, He's going to bring the humor back into Fox that DW left behind. Yeah. And who knows? He could even be better than DW. We never know. Well, it's sort of unexpected. Jimmy Johnson was sort of expected to retire at the age of 44. Clint Boyer is only age 41 at that moment, I believe. Uh, like, that's, that's pretty early to retire, but uh, that's his reasons. Uh, like, he felt he needed to retire. So, yeah. Yeah. Next um, next thing about Sully season is that Ross Chastain in the 42 car. I'm surprised that um, Bubba didn't go with the – didn't go to the 42, but it was uh, – it drifted away the rumors. Um, and, yeah. Um, I was expecting Ross to either go to the 42 or Spire. Yeah. Bubba, I think Bubba got a better deal with the Jordan racing thing because it's going to get more publicity with Michael Jordan. And with CGR, I mean, I think he would have fit there and I think he would have been a playoff contender. But I just think he fits better with Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin with obviously how successful Michael Jordan is. And it's going to bring a lot more fans to the sport, might I add. Yeah. Um, Andy, Andy Ron 99 from Instagram has joined the server of the meeting. Uh, so what's up? Howdy. Okay. So, uh, we started off with, uh, me and Mike started off, uh, the meeting, the podcast with, uh, Ross Chastain, uh, going to the 42, Bubba Walls going to 23, 11 racing at Clint Boy retiring and Eric well, Jones to the 43. What's your thoughts on, uh, those? I have something to say about Ross Chastain. I don't think he's good enough to go to a uh, top-level team like Chip Ganassi. He drives too aggressive. He needs to go to maybe like Roush or something. If you don't mind, I'm just going to say this. Dale Sr. drove insanely aggressively, and everybody loved him, so a little aggression doesn't hurt anybody whatsoever. Yeah. People People only started lacking Dale's senior after he died. 
He used to be the Kyle Bush of the sport. Oh, um, really? There are people in the 90s who loved him. Yeah. Like, there's like like a bunch of fans who liked him. Uh, didn't didn't really grow up. Uh, cause I wasn't a fan till 20, 2017. Yeah. But uh, all I knew was that he was seven time champion. Uh, his last his last win, I believe, was in Talladega. Talladega. Yeah, it was Talladega two thousand. Yeah. And uh, speaking about Talladega, of uh, back like two weeks ago or so, uh, with um, with Denny Hamlin, the uh, what's it called, with the Denny the, sorry. The double yellow line controversy with Denny Hamlin going under the yellow line and everybody uh, accusing that he could have a penalty. Uh, Fox was saying that he was trying to avoid the wreck, so he was allowed to. But everybody uh, uh, everybody was arguing that DeBetta would have won or Eric Jones. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? So I, I'd like to go back on about four years ago. I don't remember when. It was Daytona, right? Uh, yeah, I know. It was Matt Tift. It was Xfinity, right? He went down on under the yellow line while there was a wreck, but he got penalized. Um, don't watch Xfinity that much. Uh, but like he got penalized. So you're saying Matt Tift got penalized of trying to avoid the wreck, but Denny Hamlin didn't. I guess that just shows the, mo- the more favor with NASCAR with Denny Hamlin and Toyota. Exactly. Uh, honestly, I rather had DeBetta or Eric Jones won, but yeah. uh, I watched I, I rewatched the race of the final lap, and DeBetta actually sort of pushed William Byron under the yellow line. He forced like sort of forced him. So I say more to- more towards to Eric Jones to win, because like I feel like he's more, he was more cleaner. I think that Hamlin had more room to go high first before going low. Yeah. Um, you are right. De Benedetto did force Byron below the line, so he wouldn't have gotten it either. My winner, in my opinion, would have been Eric Jones. And even if he didn't win it, because didn't he have something with uh, Busher, if I recall? Yeah. Yeah, so even if he didn't win, then Ty Dillon would have won. Yeah. I mean, Eric Jones does have a good history at um, the restricted plates. That's true. He won the 2020 crash, as I like to call it. <laughs> yeah. With the beat in the car. Also, about go fast racing, losing Corey LaJoy earlier the silly season and, and uh, going part-time with their charter being sold uh, to, I believe, Matt Tift and BJ McLeod. Yep. Uh, it, was, it came to a, a big surprise to me because I like the 32. Of course, I like all the Fords. Uh, <laughs> And stuff, but like it came to a really surprise to me because I didn't know uh, they were going to go uh, part time now. So, yeah, so what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah. So they were never a competitive team. They never will be. Yeah. So it it really won't be a big effect on the sport. Yeah. Like yeah, the, true. The best driver they had was Bobby Labonte for like two races. Yeah. Specifically with, uh, what's it called, Corey LaJoy, well, I think he had a good run at Daytona, I believe, I say. I didn't watch the uh, Daytona race, though. I skipped, I sort of skipped it. But, like, at the end, where Newman hit him uh, with, in the, at the front, where Corey LaJoy, like, you know how his front end hit Corey LaJoy? I mean, no, oh, his front end hit Ryan Newman, right? I'm surprised no injuries were taken, since that was, like, in the front. To a joy? Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised that um, no injuries to LaJoy since uh, Newman's car hit the front of LaJoy's car. Oh, I got something to say about that. Yeah. Uh, you guys remember seeing him, like, when he got out of the car, like, kind of kneeling down? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, his nutsack got hit, um, like, the impact um, with the wheel. And his nutsack was just right there. Um, oh. so. Newman's okay. So Ross Chastain, 
I believe he had replaced Newman, right? He yeah. replaced Newman uh, yeah, before right. the coronavirus when Newman got injured. Um, how did he do, like, exactly? Like, how, how do you think he went during those races when Newman was out in, in the number six car? He went really strong for the first race he was in, and then he kind of trickled off, like, 20, 25th place car. Yeah. He was like old Roush. Well, not old Roush, but like what everyone expected Newman to do. Yeah. 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 I thought Ryan was going to win Daytona 500. Yeah, big facts. Uh, yeah. Speaking of silly season, uh, with track house racing with the 99 car, Daniel Suarez uh, goes to that car. Um, what do you think they're going to do with what, what do you think he's going to do? Uh, or do you think most likely it will be like Gaunt Brothers and stay at the back or? He's going to stay at the back. It's Dan <laughs> Torres. When he was with Joe Gibbs, he was in the back. Like, what would you expect him to do with the third yeah. card? That's a good point. Like, yeah. Suarez, Suarez at Xfinity, he won a championship, I believe. Every, yes. He had a lot of pro, he had a lot of promise and excitement coming into that 19 car back in 2017 or 16. Um, but that just died off. And then went to Stuart Haas with the 41. That died off as well. Uh, and then Gaunt Brothers, which was a bit expected because nobody really wanted Suarez at that time. But, yeah. Suarez was rushed, in my opinion. He won yeah. the one championship with Xfinity. He should have done what Chase Elliott did and stayed another year and then went up to Joe Gibbs. But I understand that, you know, with Carl retiring all of a sudden, you know, he was the only person. But I, I just feel like he was rushed. I wish Carl had done a farewell tour to let Suarez develop a little more so you can guaranteed get that driver that we know he could have been. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Also, uh, with all the young young drivers, Chase Briscoe moving up to the 14, uh, Noah Gregson, I, he's, I don't think he's promoting. I don't think he will. He's staying uh, in JRM. Oh, yeah, he is? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I didn't hear that. But uh, Noah Gregson uh, still in the playoffs, right? For Xfinity? Yes, I believe. I don't really pay attention to Xfinity. I used to, but not anymore. Yeah. Noah Gregson, uh, Riley Herbst. Don't think Riley Herbert is that good. Harrison, uh, Harrison Burton, I'm neutral to him. I don't think he's he's good, but like I don't think he's good. But yeah, Burton needs another couple of years in Cup. Herbst, I don't know what to tell you, man. He Herbst sucks. Yeah. Yes, he made the playoffs, but that's because, in my opinion, it's too many playoff spots. Yeah. And also with um, the '88 car, well. The fourth car for Hendrick, we, we don't really know what number it's going to be. It's either go, People are saying it's either going to be the 5 or the 25 with Kyle Larson going to be driving it. Um, I think Kyle Larson is going to be a fit to Hendrick just because it's most likely. But, um, yeah. I believe if, Kyle Larson doesn't deserve to go racing again in 2021. Why is that? Because he's racist. Maybe, like, later on in the season, part-time. But he doesn't deserve that. Like, he doesn't deserve that. Like, with all that's going on in the country right now, he's, there's going to be protests out of Hendrick. Like, I don't know. I mean, well, he, you make a good point there where there is going to be protests. However, yeah, like, I believe – I don't know how true this is, but from what I've seen – Larson has done the steps to educate himself, and I and truly young. believe humans deserve a second shot. Yeah, that, I agree with that. Uh, like Kyle Larson will bring the Bucks to the table because he is a good driver, but I don't know. I think it's a little early. Yeah, it was a little too early. I I, I can agree with you on that. I I definitely think that's going to bring the racial. Yeah stereotype back to nascar that we're just a bunch of southern hicks who are racist and you know just all, all that stuff that we had brought and then we brought back but at the same time we let michael jordan into our sport we let emmett smith into our mm -hmm. sport 
Bubba Wallace as well. But That's true. Bubba Wallace is getting a lot of sponsors. Because of uh, what happened back at Talladega with the new stuff. and But I believe that Kyle, like, with and with uh Andy saying that uh he shouldn't be in 2021, I agree with that. I sort of agree with that. Uh, yeah. When it's, when he says it's too early, I say he either comes back in 2022 or 2023. But 2023 might be a little too late. Um, I say 2022 might be the perfect cock spot for him to come back. I see. I I can agree with that. Um, I can see where it was too early. Yeah. But like uh. With him reinstating in like one year or so, but uh, with him coming back to the World of Outlaws very early, with him getting a few wins and stuff, um, I think he should just like stay in World of Outlaws this year. Actually, wait, no. Actually, never. Just scratch that off. Um, yeah, it's just a little too early for Kyle Larson just to come back. That's what I'm just going to say. Yeah. Like it's not even a whole year after the incident and he's already coming back. I'm going to say this, not all Southern dudes are racist. I'm Southern, but I ain't racist. Black lives do matter. Yeah. After yeah. Bubba Walls, um, it, I say it isn't Bubba Walls' fault for seeing the news. It's just that people are just criticizing him for making it a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, a, that's I what I think personally. But now, he didn't see it. It was his crew. And it was just a poor judgment by NASCAR. Yeah, and everybody's saying, "Oh, done. it's Bill Walsh's fault for doing that." Yeah, it's not. It's not his fault. I know that. It's not his fault. What they should have done is the the team did the right thing, obviously reporting it, because you know no one wants a hate crime. We all know yeah. what was going on earlier in the spring and the summer. No one wanted that in our sport. We don't want a hate crime, regardless how you feel about Wallace. But NASCAR should have done a better job of checking instead of already being like, okay, there's a noose in his hauler. We're going to bring the feds. No, they should have checked it first and then been like, hey, this is a garage stall, not like, a noose. So, like, the thing is, the thing is, if they made it a garage stall pull rope, why is it, like, in a noose? That's, that's my question. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm, true. But, like, when the FBI said uh, there was a video back in like last year with uh, where, where the pull rope was at, um, that just like scratched off everything and was like, okay, it's, uh, it was not meant, it was not a hate crime. And then everybody was like, okay, I'm leaving NASCAR. Uh, this sport should be a white sport. But, um, but like back when uh, Jordan and Hamlin were going to make their team, Jordan said they needed more diversity in the sport, which I agree. Yes. Like, this is America. America isn't supposed to be just whites. Like, it, America is supposed to have different people, like, different races. Yeah. Like, it's the it's land, the of, land op- of opportunity. I agree. Like, I, I don't think it's okay for whites to be the top. I think everyone should be equal. Yeah. Uh, I with agree the, with that. With the BLM thing, I've been scrolling on TikTok and stuff, um, and everybody's saying uh, Black Lives Matter, but some people are saying All Lives Matter, and, and everybody's like uh, criticizing them for that. I'm, I think like, it just, I- yeah, it's just sad for me to see that. I'm not but, gonna get into my poli- uh, political <laughs> opinions on this yeah. podcast. You know, I don't want to start shit. But if you all want to like talk about it, like. Yeah. And you want to be civil, we can have a debate after this, but I'm not going to talk about it on here. Okay, uh, what else with Silly Season? Uh, we can Ryan? talk about the race last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which was, I believe, Kansas. Kansas. So, Joey Logano uh, coming into the championship for Kevin Harvick coming in second. Uh, honestly, when we were doing in the chat for Instagram uh, for the NASCAR Directors Cup Series, it seems like uh, a lot of people liked it, especially you, Mike, because I... <laughs> <laughs> you and Eddie Benzie be like, let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm there, like, Logano fan right here. <laughs> I'm there like, uh, where did Kevin Harvick finish? <laughs> All right, I agree. I see the point that the package is crap. Yeah. Um. But the thing is, Joey played it properly. 
it's not like he took advantage of the package, just like the playoff system when he won in 2018. Yeah. He took advantage of it and he played the game. Don't I've seen this all over the place. I'm going to steal it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I know, like everybody's like, everybody's like, oh, this this driver shouldn't have won. This driver shouldn't have uh, lost. But like, uh, I was, um, I heard that. I didn't watch Kansas because I don't really have time to watch the races. But I heard that like everybody was saying, oh, the race was so slow. It felt slow. Uh, it felt like uh, the gas pedal wasn't working or something. I, I made that up. Kansas was exciting. It was pretty good, yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't was... like top of the level of Daytona, but it was good for a, um intermediate. Yeah. Also, with the road courses, everybody's saying, like, remove all the road co- courses for 2022, like Road America, Watkins Glen, Sonoma. Uh, what else do we got? The Roval. Um, I think that's it, right? No, Circuit of the Americas. Yeah, Circuit of the Americas. The Sonoma? Movie? Yeah, I already said Sonoma. Watkins Glen. Honestly, I say you should remove, like, two of them. Like, the Roval. No, like, Roval's the best road course. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's cap. Remove Sonoma, if anything. Yeah. Sonoma's my home track, uh, but I don't know. I don't really – like, I don't like road courses that much just because – but I, I like I like the road – I like the Roval. Like, I like the Roval a lot. It's my Roval's favorite. good. Watkins Glen is good. I'm not really a huge fan of road courses either, so I feel that. Like, but, like I don't a, hate them. Yeah. I'm not a fan of road courses, but like when driving NASCAR heat, I just like driving the road courses. Like, like I don't know, it just feels like feels cool just to drive a road course. Yeah. Also, with um, Pocono still having uh, two uh, spots in the schedule. Back to like I think it's a double header. Yep. So how do you feel about Pocono having another double header with uh other double headers from this season? Pocono is in my top five one of the worst tracks in the circuit right now. We need like I don't know what we need for a double header, but just that Pocono. So boring. Yeah. Even with, Ken, even with Kentucky and um, Chicagoland, Chicagoland's last winner was Alex Bowman, and the very final winner for Kentucky was Cole Custer, which Cole Custer did have his first rookie win. Well, a rookie Chicago- win in the season. That's good ones. I think um, I think Pocono's boring, like Andy said. I completely agree mm-hmm. with that. I don't think it should have a doubleheader. If you want to have a double header. Let's talk about like a track that's that entertaining. Everybody likes, not just Pocono. Bristol. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Bristol, Bristol, Darlington, Martinsville, yes. Daytona, maybe. You know, there's so many other tracks. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I hear Pocono sells really well. And I'm sure it's a beautiful facility and that's why it sells really well. But the racing there is it's it's not that good. Yeah. With also, I forgot with the Indy Road Course replacing the Brickyard with a road course. Um, I don't think the Xfinity Road Course, the re- Xfinity Road Course race was good. It's okay. Yeah, like, like uh, with Daytona, they just implanted a a chicane with the Daytona Road Course, right? A, sh- yeah. uh, a chicane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like how do they like I don't I don't know how they do it but like how they put in the little uh what's it called the um I don't know. Well, I don't think they should replace it because the brickyard is a big piece of history for our sport. Yeah. Uh like it's like many and just many amazing racers there. Not just NASCAR. IndyCar. Like IndyCar, Formula One. 
like we like if you're gonna replace it with a road course just take it off the schedule like the road course isn't as good the race in itself isn't good just the only thing people like it there is because it's big history yeah well i had only watched the final lap if i'm being honest, and I thought the final lap was great, so I automatically assumed the race was, was crazy. awesome. Um, I don't necessarily – like, I'm neutral with the change. I can see why NASCAR did it, because if the fans really liked the road course race as much as they said they did, then that's fine. But the normal track has so much history to it, with Jeff Gordon winning the inaugural one to – even on IndyCar. I think that it works well for Indy cars, but not for NASCAR. Yeah. The normal track that is. For the, the road course, road course is good for both. Yeah, for the fact that NASCAR is changing a bunch of stuff, right? Even with the road courses, like I'm fine with that. But like the fact that fans are begging for more more road courses, and then they add court road some road courses and remove some. Uh, some of the oval tracks. Some fans are just like, no, don't add that one. Don't uh, remove this. Like, mm-hmm. it, just, it just, like, bothers me that they're, like, they're begging, and NASCAR just gives it to them, and they're like, no. Because they don't want to see Chase win. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. You guys- Chase is a good road course racer. I have to respect that. It's like, it's like Jeff Gordon, how he's, like, mm-hmm. good at Sonoma and stuff. But, like, I- they'll say what I- you want. I personally am a Chase Elliott fan just because in his rookie year, uh, I met him right after Dale retired, and he was just, he's really nice, so that's just, I, I kind of like him, so I want him to win. He's very nice. Um, he gave me a free t-shirt and signed it for me, so just, he's a good guy, so I don't want to hate on him too much. Now, yeah, I don't hate Chase at all. I think that, he, like you said, he is a good guy. Um, I, it, it's his fans, not all of them. I mean, not all his fans are terrible, but the ones who <laughs> whine about every little thing. And that's in every the fan base, ones. you know? The toxic ones. That's, that's every fan base. It's just if, prominent in Hendrix fan bases. Yeah. If we want to hate on somebody, let's hate on Danny Hamlin. Because I met him once, too, and he is a jerk. He was just stuck to his phone, and he was like, hi, here's a shirt, and go away. He is a jerk. Just let's hate on Denny Hamlin. <laughs> For me, being like, a Harvick fan, it's sort of hard uh, looking, at, uh, looking at the comments saying, oh, Kevin Harvick uh, sucks, he uh, wins too much. Oh, my God. It's hard for me. So don't, don't judge me being a Harvick fan. <laughs> Harvick sucks. <laughs> this team cheats too often. Wait, That's huh? true, X Bud. <laughs> Honestly, uh, like I'm a Harvick fan, right? But like not hardcore. You know what I mean? Right. Just like neutrals. Like, did he win, or did he uh get a good finish? And like, if it's I... if it's a close race and he loses, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll get upset, but. So are you so, more of like a casual fan, or are you more like a real hardcore fan? Ca- casual. Got you. I just want to point out, Eli, hit, if you watch his live streams on Instagram, he'll have like his back room, ba- background, and it will be like a big bookshelf filled with like Harvick gear. <laughs> like, sure, you're sure you're not hardcore? Wait, me? Yeah. My live stream, hmm. Yeah, you're like my you're... back for my background. I only have a wall and a chair. Like I could, I could turn, I could turn on my camera right here, and there's a wall and a chair. <laughs> yeah, what about that bookshelf I saw in that one. Bookshelf. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Like I, I like the big shelf. It has like a basketball on it and a ton of die casts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I collect a bunch of die casts. Most of them are Kevin Harvick, but for some reason, all my all the, all the ones I have the most is um, Chase Elliott. I don't know why. I sold most of my die casts, and I only, 
I have some really rare ones up there. One, there's only 300 of them out. One, there's only 500. Um, those yeah. things go for about five, six hundred dollars. And this guy, cool. my grandpa's friends gave him to me because he's a big NASCAR guy. So, if you want any of them, I mean, I'm always open up for sales. <laughs> um. Okay. So, I'm thinking of another Bristol uh, dirt. Yeah, Bristol dirt. Um, I'm ups- like I don't know. I'm neutral, but like mixed emotions. You know what I mean? Got you. Like, like I don't. I like Bristol as it is. Yeah, same. Like I, I like the racing. I like I like the racing a lot. Um, and it's like very competitive as well too. Um, with with last Brist- with the playoff Bristol race with Kyle Busch coming in second, almost winning, but. Of course, Kevin Harvick won. Uh, I'm not going to brag. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, Bristol Dirt don't know how to feel about that, though. Honestly, I think they should test it out with Xfinity first. Yeah. It goes up to Cup, just see if it's any good. And I know the Xfinity cars are different than Cup, but it's still close, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, Jimmy Jam, he's supposed to uh, – Jimmy Jam, he's supposed to be um, – in this podcast, don't know what happened, but um, I think he showed me a video of old Bristol dirt back in 2000, back in like 2000 or 1999. I watched it, and I mean, the racing's okay, but it's like, it's it's sprint cars, so it's the just, racing's gonna be different. Just normal dirt, honestly. Like, El- like if you want to put, if you want to put dirt Bristol, just might as well just put in Eldora as well. <laughs> right. Like, I... I- I don't hate the idea of Dirt Bristol. I get why it's there. You, We've all been asking for a cup. Please get cup on Dirt. Please get cup on Dirt. But Bristol, I, I can see why they did it because it's a track familiar with everybody. You already know it can be con- uh, converted into Dirt. Yeah. So I can see why not do it. But the problem is, can these cup cars handle Dirt? They need to do tests. Yeah. yeah. Maybe next yeah. year maybe next year they'll practice it like in the off season or something. Yes, well, it might please. Be, might I want to see this. Yeah. Like they should do like a live like of them practicing like a a pre-race. Actually no, not pre-race, a uh, post-season No, no, pre-season uh No, pre-season tests. Yeah, off-season tests. They just like yeah. race oh. around the track <laughs> seeing if they Yeah, I agree with that. Um. So, what's next? Oh, uh, who did we talk? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ryan Priest, thirty-seven car. Uh, I think. Oh wait, no, 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 no. Uh, we're gonna start with off with Jermaine Racing and uh, Levine Family Racing of, of them closing uh, yes. doors. Wait, what happened about them? I didn't get. Oh, uh, Levine is closing. Uh, because of um Toyota, and Joe Gibbs. And um, Jermaine is just closing their charter, I think. Oh, by the way, that voice I was talking in, that ain't my real voice. I was just going to see if anyone wants to make fun of me. Just throwing that out there. Unlimited minutes. Nice. Okay. So. I love pumpkin cats. Uh, what's it called? Um, Christopher Bell going into the 20 car after Levine Family Racing closes doors. They're gonna have a uh, Levi's gonna have a special uh, throwback uh, to uh, their old paint scheme when they yep. first opened up. Honestly, I think it's really cool. I remember that paint scheme, uh, watching throwback races. But like honestly, that it could have been the Darlington throwback race. It could have been in the Darlington throwback race. But actually, Christopher Bowl went to the their his throwback for the trucks or his uh, for the truck. Christopher Bowl's truck season. Uh, Truck paint scheme throwback. That's what, that's what I meant. But honestly, I see I can, why it's there at Texas, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think the shop is in Texas, right? Like, yeah, they're from Texas. Yeah. Texas they could have run it at both, like what Brad Keselowski did for his discount tire throwback oh, yeah. and what Daniel Hemrick did for his throwback. Yeah. Uh, also, with uh, Circuit, of Amer- uh, Circuit of the America coming into the NASCAR Cup Series with Texas moving to the All Star Race. Not a big fan of that move, um, cause Texas. Uh, I don't think most people like the racing there, but 
I know Eric Estep's going to go to the first All Star race. I, I bet. You know Eric Estep too. Everybody does. He's one of the biggest NASCAR YouTubers. Shout out to yeah. Eric. If yeah. you're watching this, most likely not. Hi. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not watching this, but really love your content, man. Keep it up. I just watched your um. I know actually. I know he's not watching this, but I just watched the um. His latest video that he posted today or something. Or I yesterday. right before the meeting, I was watching that. Um. And yeah. I believe, uh, who else, who else, who else, uh, Christopher, will go Christopher Bell going to the 20 car, do you, uh, most likely Reem is going to come with him. Do you think DeWalt's going to stay, most likely? Possibly. With Eric Jones, I don't know what sponsors he's going to bring, though, because Bubba Wallace got the sponsors with him, DoorDash, Cash App, and Columbia as well. I don't know why, but... Bo is bringing a bunch of sponsors, but talking about Eric Jones, um, I don't. We just talked about Eric Jones in the beginning, but like, let's talk about Ryan Priest in the thirty-seven. Uh, not sure where he's going to move. He's probably going to go down to Xfinity, most likely. Same with Ty Dillon. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but um, Ryan Priest going down to Xfinity—that won't surprise me. Yeah, Ryan. And Ty, I think Grandpa Richard will figure something out for him, whether it's Xfinity or if they somehow get him a cup ride. Yeah. Because we also have Spire, keep in mind. I don't know how many charters they have, but I know apparently LaJoy might get one, so they could give the other one to Ty. So most likely, I'm saying since uh, people were saying that, I think Eric Eastup said, in one of his videos about Corey LaJoy, he might go to the 14 car, but obviously now Chase Briscoe's in the 14 now. I think most po the possibility of Corey LaJoy going to the 37 are high, but we'll see. I, I have a random question. Who's y'all's championship for? Uh, mine is going to be obviously Joey Logano. He's already in the thing, so I got three more. Kevin Harvick, Hamlin, that's automatic. Last one, Chase Elliott, or... That's what I would have said. Joey Logano, obviously, since he just locked in. Kevin Harvick, he'll probably win this weekend, or, yeah, this weekend. Harvick wins every other weekend. It's stupid. Yeah, he's, he's been, he's been he's really He's just that dominant. good, and that's how 2020's been. He's been dominating. Why? He's been dominating. Wait, he's been, dom he's been dominating regular season, but he's been quite silent a little bit. Uh, in the playoffs? Like, oh, the pro round of 12 and round of 8? Okay. Okay. Um, Kevin Harvick, Joe Logano, Danny Hamlin, obviously, and then Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski. Unless Truex wins at Martinsville, then Truex. Man, it's crazy to think that Cole Custer made it, made it to the playoffs at one point <laughs> this season. <laughs> Him going... If Ryan Blaney and Harvick and I don't remember who else was up there. I know Custer was, but I don't remember the last guy. If all of them weren't fighting, I think Harvick would have won Kentucky. But true, 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 Blaney true. went down on the apron. He came up, hit Harvick. That slowed yeah. him down. And then Custer was just at the right place, right time. Yeah. Uh, his, I like Custer a lot. Yeah. Like, he was, he's easily rookie of the year because of that win. I say um, – John Hunter Nemechek, he's been silent for me. Really, Andy? <laughs> what? <laughs> you just changed your name. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to blur that. I'm kidding. I don't what? know what he changed it to. <laughs> <laughs> Change your name, bro. Change your name. <laughs> You're a family-friendly <laughs> podcast, folks. <laughs> I just realized that I look, I look at his name. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um... But yeah, Cole Custer, in my opinion, he's going to carry SHR with Harvick Briscoe. And then when Harvick retires, I don't know who's going to take his ride. How old is Harvick? 44? He's like, like in his like, 40s, man. Yeah, I think he's going to retire somewhat in the next three, se three or two seasons. That's what I, I say, say 2023 because that's when his contract ends. Oh, yeah. Surprise, he won. Unless he, unless he doesn't slow down like Johnson has. In 2017. Same. As you know, did he win 20, uh, race in 2017? 
Johnson did that was like his last yeah pretty so good 2018 season and then 2018 on I would, has been suckish I would like him to win Texas because he has the most wins in Texas but we'll see I want to see Jimmy win one final time that's all I'm asking for from the next yeah. if he wins oh. that makes my 2020 better Denny Hamlin is go what <laughs> just read the whole I can't Denny read Hamlin it. is I, is goat and better than the nine. I'm going to make you host then. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll change it. I'll change it. So, uh, okay, so uh, we're pretty much – I'm saying we're halfway because uh, I got more – We got. I, I think we have more to talk about, but if not, it's fine. I got something to say about the Jimmy Johnson thing. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing him win another race, obviously. I've – been a Jimmy Johnson fan since I was in NASCAR. He he's not really my favorite, but like I've always had like that like towards Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, like a, the respect. Like, exactly. Like I've respected him. He's been one of my favorite drivers since I was a fan in 2012. And even when I didn't know NASCAR, I just thought he was a cool guy. Yeah. But anyway, I was at the last ever race that he won, Dover 2017. So, if he doesn't win a race, it will be cool for me to say, ha ha, I was at Jimmy Johnson's last race. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson but I also said that about Jeff Gordon, and Jeff Gordon won Martinsville. Yeah. No, but um, it's sad that, because uh, you know how if, like, Jimmy Johnson, when he was dominant with the championships, the seven championships, everybody, like, completely hated him for winning, right? Yep. And now that um, he's retiring, everybody has, like, this mad respect for him. That's what happens, man. Yeah. I'm still – okay, so I'm still new to the NASCAR community. I'm still learning about it. So. Yeah, go ahead and learn about it. Ask questions. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll help you out. What's it called? Uh, Joey Logano. Uh, what's it called? He won 2018, right? Yes, he did. You know, okay, so – I remember 2019 was when the Mustangs came in, and honestly, I like the Mustangs better than the Fusions. They just look better by style. Same with the Camaros. Yeah. Don't know what's up with Camrys, though, because the Camrys look like, like, to me, when I see a Camry, like, it's usually a, a 2012, and I'm like, that looks so old style. Karen cars. Yeah. But, yeah, Kyle Busch, uh, going winless this year. Uh, everybody likes that. Yes, it's the best thing of in my life. It's the best. Would that be the first thing? Would that be the first in history? Uh, a driver winning the championship uh, no. on the same year, and then um, the next year goes winless. Richard no, Dale Petty. Earnhardt had that, and then another uh, driver did. Richard Petty did. Um, oh yes, thank you. He won his seventh championship, then he, like, gone winless for 14 years. Oh, yeah. Mm. How about Alan Kowicki? He won the championship in, nine, in, the, in 92 and then, I believe, passed away in 93. Yeah. That was a tragic moment in NASCAR because yeah. Alan Kowicki, um, he got sponsored by Hooters. Yeah. He by winning the contract on a napkin at Hooters. Hmm. I didn't know that the I, contract part. It's in a book I have about NASCAR legends. It's it doesn't matter. I remember having this one book. Um, it was about like each and every driver. I remember Tony Stewart being on the cover. Um, it's like I think he used to when he used to drive for Joe Gibbs. But yeah. Yeah, I, think I had something I, similar to that. I have that same exact I book. Think, I think it was called Learning Your ABC's NASCAR Style. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't have that. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and who do you think is going to go to the 96 of Gaunt Brothers, or most likely Gaunt Brothers is just going to go uh, part-time? Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon. Yeah, I think that's his best shot. Either that or the 37. Yeah, I don't think Ty D – okay, so for me, I don't think Ty Dillon is good enough for the 37, even though he got a stage win in the Roval this I year. Win. Win. Like, I, I say he goes to uh, another smaller team to, like, yeah. 
to like just build up his confidence, even though he's like been in uh, this cup for like 2017, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I can see him going to either the 36, 7, or the 96. I'm not sure which one, though. Okay, but okay, so you know the conversation with the goats, right? With Jimmy Johnson, Richard Petty, and Dale Earnhardt? Yes. I'm going to say this as a joke. Timmy Hill. Or is that Timmy Hill. <laughs> how, how do you Timmy guys my uh, thing? Hello? Hey, I'm, I'm right here. Okay, so what's it called? Um, I think we only have like two Joey Logano fans in the chat, right? Or we have more? Um, the, the I don't know. That's a good question. He doesn't have very many fans in this community. <laughs> Bro, I just got someone to be a fan, though. Like, it's like, it's a win-win. Yeah. Like, it's the best feeling when somebody somebody becomes an NASCAR fan, or at least, like, tries to be. Mm-hmm. What is that background you're using? <laughs> I don't hear it. It's called green screen. Green well, screen. It's called virtual okay. background. I for, I was gonna share my screen, but like I I forgot to do it. But it's fine. I don't really need to. It's the first podcast, anyway. So yes, yeah, the first podcast. We could. Should I should I uh, do the podcast next week? Oh, what's it called next week? Um, same time. I did not mind doing this. It was it wasn't too bad. Yeah. It's fun. It was it was fun uh, being critic criticizing Denny Hamlin and, and uh, Kevin Harvick. I never criticized Denny Hamlin, so let me go do that. Uh, Denny Hamlin, you are a good driver, but you are a jerk, so screw you. Oh, yeah, with uh, him. Coming from a like, Joey Logano fan. Like, okay, so I was watching Radioactive, right, Daytona, and all yeah. Denny Hamlin said was, hope Brian Newman's okay in the radio when he won, when he was still in his car. Like, hope yeah. Brian okay. Like, like, dang. But, like, uh, Denny Hamlin with – De Benedetto last year with at Bristol, um, De Benedetto just like went to go greet him, right? Mm -hmm. Went to greet him, like to congratulate him, but like I don't think Denny Hamlin really uh, meant that uh, he, he was care. sorry. No, like he, he said he was sorry for taking his win, but I don't feel like he meant that. No. And, yeah. Why why would you be sorry about? taking someone's win i mean it yes it was a kind of a crappy thing to do but like i don't know why he apologized for it we all know yeah. he didn't mean it and plus and with, with talladega he did not even say anything i think I, don't, I didn't watch the interview but like i don't i don't think he said anything did he no the better did it was emotional as well too that was... i'm going to quote a matt uh de Menedetto or Danny Hamlin hate. Group. Okay, okay, Andy, stop. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to quote a uh, Danny Hamlin fan group or a hate group that I'm in. Is after it the, Talladega? I, I quote. Yeah. F you, Danny Hamlin. You made a grown man cry, and you don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get hating Danny Hamlin, but like. Making a grown man cry, and he just Di Benedetto does the same speech every time he loses. I'm sorry, it's true. Uh, what's it called? So, uh, list. Okay, so we're just gonna we're just gonna make fun at this point. But like, if this is gonna be make fun, but if you enjoyed this podcast so far, uh, like and subscribe. But it mostly, most of all, you're subscribed. But uh, most people don't even watch the full podcast or the streams I make. So. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna like just uh, make, just do some fun about something and like. Okay, so first question: Top five least favorite drivers, starting with Mike. Okay, Bubba Wallace because he's kind of whiny. I don't 
like I said earlier in the podcast, it's not because of his beliefs. I just think he's kind of a whiny driver. So Martin Truex Jr. Yeah, personality. Yeah. Martin Truex Jr. Because also kind of whiny Toyota driver, rivalry with Joey Logano. Um, Brad Keselowski because he's kind of a know-it-all, if you will. Um, yes. Hey, but I, I like his I like his quote though, Kyle. Like his quote back then, Kyle. Kyle Bush, Bush is a blank. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it because you told me not to swear. We'll try not to though. Okay. Um, number four. I have so many least favorites. I have to think. Um, Denny Hamlin. I just explained that because. Yeah. Jerk yeah. and Logano fan. And somewhat Tyler Reddick because of his idiotic moves at play tracks. <laughs> oh, I see. I need to drop something. <laughs> okay, I have the so... stupidest reasons for disliking drivers. Please come at me. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with my five now. Uh, number five, Denny Hamlin. Um, because of the same reasons uh, Mike said. Uh, number two, I don't, I don't hate anybody, but like, I just don't like them at all. Um, Bubba Wallace, I'm just, I said I'm neutral, but like, I don't like any, I don't like anything. Um, Daniel Suarez, I'm, I'm sort of doing this by drive, drive style. Daniel Suarez uh, did not even, did not even qualify for the Daytona 500, right? And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., don't judge me. Actually, no. Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., just because. And then um, I only have four. Actually, no, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch. Number th- Actually, Kyle Busch is going to be number one. Danny Hamlin, number two. Stenhouse is going to be five because I, I don't know why I put him on there. And then um, I forgot who, who I said, but yeah. Andy? About you what? Oh, yeah, I, uh, my least favorite drivers. Um, uh, at number five, I I'm gonna put uh, what's his face, uh, Brad Keselowski. Number four, uh, uh what's his face, um, uh, Ross Chast- What's his face? <laughs> Nobody, Andy. What's his face? <laughs> um, number three. Uh, Corey LaJoy. Uh, number two, Kyle Busch. And number one, Denny Hamlin. We already know Denny Hamlin. Every time, number one, everybody got it. Except for the Denny Hamlin fans. They're like, if if you're a Denny Hamlin fan watching this, leave. Now. Yeah. Yeah, listen to it. <laughs> dislike the video. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't want any dislikes. <laughs> But yeah, is Kyle Busch? It's still 2020. That's that's one of my favorite quotes, just because I I put that as a we have a quote assignment for my language art teacher, and I put that it's still 2020. I don't know why, but it's like a good quote it is a great yeah. quote. It's still 2020. So when it hits 2021, Kyle Busch is gonna be like, he's gonna go one win. 2023 is gonna go two wins. 2024 is gonna go three wins. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. So, just goofing around at this point. Ice glasses. Fresh. Andy just vibing. This. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I forgot my hat. It's fine. Okay. Everybody probably just clicked off the video at this point. If you did not yeah. click off this video, thank you. You're an OG. Oh, what's up, guys? If you like this video, I'll give you $1,000. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Beast. <laughs> no, uh, have you seen? Okay, so I, was, I was scrolling TikTok, right? And I seen the For You page. <gasps> I'm Mr. Beast's cousin. Like, you literally have the, fa- the face scan on. Like, <laughs> with the, like, everybody's like, okay, so I, I feel like TikTok comments are worse than Instagram comments. Yes. Yeah, I get probably. Toxic, um, I get very toxic and kind of inappropriate. 
in chats sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I only do it if you're acting like a uh, d bag. Do you ever like come and like talk to me in an Instagram chat? Like, I'll be chill with you unless like you're just unless you're a advanced cool person. Unless, unless if you're Kobe Light. Yeah, because he's not really okay. Never mind. Wait, what's wrong with Kobe Light? He's he nice. just self. He self. He's nice, but he just self promotes too much in chats. And uh, changes the theme too much. I was like, if you change the theme one more time, oh, one week. Oh, one week ban. <laughs> like, like, what is up with the? Because uh, there's an update, right? I should stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I'm a. I'm a cut it. I'm a cut it. Okay, wait. Uh, stop. Okay, sorry. Okay, guys. So that's the end of the podcast. I don't know how many uh minutes or hours it is. Probably like two hours, right? About two hours. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Follow uh Mike on Instagram. It's gonna. His name is going to be in the description, same as Andy's and mine at the description. So, yeah. So, that's about it. We'll see you at the next podcast. Follow us, like, and subscribe to Eli's channel. Yeah. Uh, if you ever want to follow us and debate about NASCAR, go ahead, DM us. DMs are open, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Peace Eli out. videos.